Thank you for watching Darker Things, the series that brings you deep dives into his most disturbing events, personalities, true crime, conspiracy theories. Jesse the Skeleton, Jason Bald, Damien Eccles, I hope your master the devil does take you soon. I want you to be real soon. And the day you die, I will praise God. And I make you a promise. The day you die, every year on May 5th, I'm going to come to your graveside. I'm going to spit on you. I'm going to curse the day you were born. And I'm sure while I'm standing there, I'm going to have to have other bodily functions let go upon your grave. They took his little manhood before he even knew what it was. And I hate him for it. I've never hated anybody in my life. And I hate these three. And the mothers that bore them. What would cause such a visceral, violent, guttural reaction from two otherwise seemingly caring parents? Could it have been the rumors that their children were the victims of a satanic ritualistic suicide? The town was going crazy. Join me as we take a deep dive into the harrowing study of the West Memphis Three. On May 5th, 1993, three eight-year-old boys, Stevie Branch, Michael Moore, and Christopher Byers headed out to enjoy a spring afternoon after school. They were last seen riding their bikes near the Robin Bird Hills, a wooded area not far from their homes. Little did they know that it would be their last day they would be seen with love. When the sun began to set, concerns grew among their families. A search party, including parents and neighbors, scoured the neighborhood for any sign of the missing board. Tragically, their bodies were discovered the following day, bound and mutilated in a gruesome manner. The investigation intensified, focusing not only on the victims, but also on those who may have been around them that day. Witnesses recalled seeing the boys with other children playing in the vicinity of Robin Hood Hills. Suspicion also turned to the adults in the community. Were there any individuals who may have crossed paths with the boys on that fateful day? Nearly a month would pass without any word for police as to who was suspected of the savage crimes. That's when one of the benefits of living in a small town came into play. There was often a sense of solidarity in small town America, but what you do to one, you do to them all. So in the spirit of wanting to help find the killers, Victoria Hutchison, whose son was close to the two of the murdered boys, comes forward to Memphis Police Detective Donald Bray. When her son was asked if he knew of anything that could help the case, he spun a tale of witchcraft and secret meetings. Then Bray asked Hutchison if she knew anything about what her son was talking about. She claimed she did not know, but would be willing to play detective. But she knew Jesse Miskelly, who seemed to be friends with Damien Apples and Jason Baldwin. She then flirted with Jesse Miskelly, and enlisted his help in setting up a meeting with Damien Eccles and Jason Baldwin, where she would then attempt to secretly record the two boys and get them to confess to the murders of the three young children. The tape she produced would prove to be useless in pointing the fingers at Damien Eccles and Jason Baldwin. She then told Donald Bray that she had also attended an EBOP, a secret sexual satanic ritual, with Damien Eccles, Jason Baldwin, and Jason Miskelly. The story is contested, that something she either completely made up in order to please Donald Bray, was investigating her for credit card fraud and theft at a truck stop she worked at, or something she was forced to agree to by Donald Bray in exchange for him looking the other way in her own case. So the narrative of satanic rituals and drinking blood had been set in motion. What are the pretense that Jesse Miskelly was friends with Aaron Hutchson, who was best friends with Stevie Branch and with Michael Moore? Police contacted Miskelly and asked for an interview at the station. It has been suggested that they may have lured him there with a promise of $30,000 if he provided them information 
that may have led to the arrest of those involved in the murders of the three second-grade boys. Listen to what transpired after. For news, weather, and sports, Tony Brooks, Diana Davis, Terry Wood, and Dick Clay. This is KAIT 8 News. Good evening, I'm Diane Davis. And I'm Tony Brooks. In a statement given to the police and obtained by a Memphis newspaper, 17-year-old Jesse Miss Kelly allegedly confesses to watching two other suspects choke, rape, and sexually mutilate three West Memphis second graders. Jenna Newton reports. According to the published report, Miss Kelly told police he watched 18-year-old Damian Eccles and 16-year-old Jason Baldwin brutalize the children with a club and a knife. The report says Ms. Kelly told police Eccles and Baldwin raped one of the boys and sexually mutilated another as part of a cult ritual. Ms. Kelly is quoted as saying he did not take part in the rape and mutilation, but that he helped subdue one victim who tried to escape. At a press conference, Inspector Gary Gitchell said the case against the accused teens is very strong. You know, one to ten, I saw Years, satanic worship may have played a role in the murders. Since the very beginning of the investigation, people all around West Memphis have come forward with stories of satanic cults. Reverend Tommy Stacy's church is down the street from where the bodies were found. One year ago, Damien Eccles told the church's youth minister he had a pact with the devil and he was going to hell. Uh, I do know that my youth director uh, talked to Damien extensively after revival that we had, and he told him that he could not be saved, that he could not uh, give his heart to Jesus. And my youth director then tried to get him to take a Bible, and he made the statement that he could not take a Bible because if he did, the rest of them would get him. In West Memphis, Jenna Newton, KIT, 8 Night News. I went with him. All right, when? Wednesday. All right, when did you go with him? <laughs> that morning. Nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, it is. Okay. I went with them. You know. Now, were you in a car? Whose car were you on? We walked. Y'all walked. Okay. All right. We walked. And then, uh, where did you go? We went to Robin Hood. You went to the Robin Hood. Explain to me where those woods are. About uh, Blue Beacon, so close. Just a little patch of woods. A little patch of woods. Behind Blue Beacon. Behind it. Up here behind. Okay. What occurred while you were there? When I was there, I saw Damien hit this one, hit this one boy real bad, and then uh, now he started stuff, and then uh. All right. You've got in front of you a picture that was taken out of the newspaper. I believe it's got three boys, and these are the three boys that were on that day in Robin Hood Woods. Okay. Which one of those three boys is it you say Damien hit? The third picture, which will be this boy right here? Yeah. All right, that's uh, the buyer's boy. Christopher. That's who you're pointing at? Mm -hmm. If you read the caption, the grizzly slain from left, eight-year-old Michael Moore, Stephen Branch and Christopher Byers. Okay. So you saw Damien strike Chris Byers in the head. What did he hit him with? He hit him with his fist and bruised him all up real bad. Then uh, Jason turned around and hit Steve Branch. Okay. And started doing the same thing. Then the other one took off. Michael uh, Moore took off running. So I chased him and grabbed him and held him to they got there and then I left. And does he going back towards where he, the houses he, he are? Is he going to Blue Bacon? Is he going out towards the field? He Where's he to, running to? Towards the houses. Towards the houses. Where the pipe is that goes across the water. Yeah. Okay. He ran out there and I, and I called him and brought him back and then I took off. Okay. Well you came back a little bit later. And all three boys are tied. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, I took off and went home. All right. Have they got their clothes on when you saw them tied? They had them off. 
They had already gotten them all. When he first hit the boy, when Damien first hit the first boy, did they have their clothes on then? Mm-hmm. All right. When did they take their clothes off? Right, right after they beat up all three of them and beat them up real bad. Beat them up real bad. And then they took their clothes off. Then they, then they tied them. Then they tied them up, tied their hands up. They start and stuff, cutting them and stuff. And I saw it and I turned around and looked. And then I took off running. I went home. And then they called me and asked me how come I didn't stay. I told him I just couldn't. Just couldn't stay for that. I couldn't stay and see what they were doing to him. You saw somebody with a knife. Who had a knife? Jason. Jason had a knife. What did he cut with a knife? What did you see him cut or who did you see him cut? I saw him cut one of the little boys. All right. Where did he cut him at? He was cutting him in the face. Cutting him in the face. All right. Another boy was cut, I understand. Where was he cut at? At the bottom. On his bottom? Was he face down and he was him or? He was. Are you talking about bottom? Do you mean right here? Mm-hmm. In his. Okay. So right. you know what his. Is? Yeah. That's where he was cut at. That's where he was cut. Which boy was that? That right there. The, you're talking about the buyer's boy mm-hmm. again? Okay. Are you sure that he was the one that was. That's when I seen him. No. You went home. And about what time was it that all this was taking place? They called me about. I'm not saying when they called you. I'm saying what time was it that you were actually there in the park? I was there about 12. About noon? Okay. Was it after school? I let out? Well, these no, other boys. No. They, they skip school. They skip they school. Going to catch their bus or stuff and they was on their bikes. So. Alright. Hey, did you say the boys skipped school that day? These little boys did? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? They was going to catch their, going somewhere and like I said, David, Damien and them left before I did. I told my mate them there. And stuff. I had to get ready and stuff. I'll meet him there. Yeah. It was early in the morning, so they went ahead and met, met me up. Uh, they went ahead and went up there, and then I came up, you know, later on behind them. What time did you get there? I got there about nine. In the morning? Mm-hmm. Uh, Wednesday morning? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and when, what time is it right now? Right now? Yeah. You don't know what time it is? Do you not wear a watch? It's at home. So, your time period might not be exactly right what you're saying. Right. It, it was like early in the day, but you don't know exactly what time. Okay. Because we got, I've got some real confusion with the times you're telling me. But now, this 9 o'clock in the evening call that you've got, explain that to me. Well, after all the stuff happened that night, that they done it. Okay. I went home about noon. Then they called me at nine o'clock at, at night to come me. Okay. And what did they tell you on the telephone? They asked me how come I left so early and stuff. And I told them I couldn't stand there watching it no more, so I had to do something to get out of there. Okay. <laughs> Who called you? Jason. And you mentioned you heard some voice in the background. I was from Damien. And what else? I uh, think you said that he made the call from his house. He made a call from his house. And Damien was hollering in the background and said, we done it, we done it. What are we going to do if somebody saw us? What are we going to do? Okay. Now, the knives. Was there one knife, two knives? Was your knife there? Did somebody take you and use your knife? Do you have a knife? Where is it at? It's at home. Okay. The knife that you said Jason was using, where is it? I don't, I don't know what he done with it because after I left, then that's when I don't know what they done with it. After I left, I don't know what they done with it. you he hit it somewhere. Yeah, so I, I got a feeling here. You're not quite 
telling me everything. Now we're, you know, we are recording everything. So this is very, very important to tell us the entire truth. If you were there the whole time, then tell us you were there the whole time. Don't leave anything out. This is very, very important. Now just tell us the truth. I was there until they tied them up. And then that's when I left. After they tied them up, I left. But you saw them cutting on the boys. I saw them cutting on them. And then so they what, laid, what else left is there? They laid, that? they laid the knife down beside them. And I saw them tying them up. And then that's when I left. Were the boys conscious or were they? They was unconscious too. Unconscious. Okay. And after I left, they done more. They done more. So they had them under control. You were there the whole time that was taking place? I was there. Okay. One of them was cut on the face real bad. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. And one of them was being cut on his face. Yes, sir. Did you ever use, did anyone use a stick and hit the boys with? I mean, I had kind of a big old stick when he hit that first one. After he hit him with the spears, knocked him down, then he got him a big old stick and hit him. What did the stick look like? I mean, was it like a a, a, a big log like that, or is it, or is it a stick? Yeah, I'll say it was about that, about that big round. <clears throat> I'll say about that wrong. Okay. Yeah. About the size of a baseball bat, maybe just a little bit bigger around. Yeah. That's, so That's what you described as your hands, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long was the knife that Jason was using? All right. You're describing a knife that would be about six inches long. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And what kind of blade did it have on it? Uh, like a regular. Just a regular knife blade. Was it a knife that you fold up, or was it a like a hunting knife that's just, just one piece? Just a fold up knife. It was a folding knife? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does Damien have a knife? No. He doesn't have one? He didn't have one that night? He didn't have one that night. Did he borrow yours? No, he didn't borrow mine. Okay. Did they have a briefcase with them? Mm -hmm. Didn't, you didn't see a briefcase? I didn't see a briefcase. Not unless they left it there that, that day before it happened. Not unless they left it there then, but I didn't see it there that day. Have you ever seen them with a briefcase before? I seen them. Once that one night, I seen them with them that night. Okay. Yeah. What, what is kept inside that briefcase? They had some cocaine and a little gun. Is that where you first saw the pictures mm -hmm. of the boys? I think they seen and the, you saw the pictures in the briefcase? Mm -hmm. That's right. When we had that cult. Okay. Now, you have participated in this cult, right? Yes. How long have you been involved in it? Been in for about three months. Okay. Now, on these these meetings, have they ever been violent? Anybody gotten mad and gotten fired? No. Okay. How long after you got home before you received the phone call? 30 minutes? An hour? Um, an hour after you got home? Okay. So they were there for a lot longer. Mm -hmm. When he called you on the phone, did he say he just got in? Um, he, 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 he called me when he first got out. He called me. He said, how come I, how come I left? I told him I, I couldn't stand. I had this of males. Okay. You, just, you couldn't stand it. And then Damien, I heard Damien in the background saying, we done it, we done it, what we gonna do us? What about somebody saw us? When you got with the, with the boys, and with Jason and Baldwin, when you three were in the woods, and then the little boys come up, about what time was it when the boys came up to the woods? I say it was about five or seven. Now, did you have your watch on at the time? Mm -hmm. You didn't have your watch on. Mm -hmm. um, like you told me earlier, around seven or eight or well, which time is it? Are, are you? Yeah, it's to get dark. Okay. Yeah. It's to get dark. Okay. Well, that that clears it up. I didn't know. 
that's what I was wondering. Was it getting dark or, or what? So we got up there at 6, but the boys come up when it starts to get dark. Okay. So you and Jason and Bob, uh, Damien, y'all got there right at 6? Is that, is that a normal time y'all meet at 6? Yeah. Okay. When you do your cult stuff. Is six, does six mean something? I mean, is that a is that a time you normally do meet? Yeah. Okay. So y'all met out there at six, and and then the boys come up about what time? About seven. About seven o'clock. Okay. So y'all were out there with the boys and all this stuff going on. Until you noticed it started getting dark. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, are you sure about that? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Who tied the boys up? Uh, Damien. Did Damien just tie them all up, or did anyone help Damien? Or? Jason helped him. Okay. And what did they use to tie them up? A rope. Okay. What color was the rope? The vial. Did you ever see the boys in the water? Uh, yeah. I'm by water. All right. How did the boys get in the water? They uh, pulled them into the water. All right. When you say they, who who is it that pulled them to the water? Jason and uh, Damien. So clearly, something has gone wrong. A foul, a rock. Perhaps well, not really wrong, but an intentional coercion into a confession somebody with a marginal IQ of 72. And now that the die has been cast, they're going to be able to arrest Jesse Miskelly, Jason Baldwin, and Damon Eckle under the guise of participating in a satanic ritual childhood sacrifice. Sometimes it is the fact that truth is stranger than fiction. We are not going to be able to include all of this exciting and compelling information in the one episode. So until next time, I'm your host, Doug Duck, and reminding that once you enter the dark, you may never be the same.